Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining. I'm Dr. John White, Chief Medical Officer, and you're watching Coronavirus in Context. There's a lot of misinformation out there, especially when it comes to your health. How do you know what to believe? To provide some insights and even give you some tools, I've asked Stephen Brill. He is an award-winning author, journalist, and co-CEO of NewsGuard. Mr. Brill, thanks for joining me. Happy to be with you. Thanks for having me. Tell our audience first about NewsGuard. Why did you feel there was a need to create it and, and what does it do? Well, here's the need to create it in a nutshell. Um, if you think about how we consumed media before the internet, uh, you know, just think about a library. Okay. You go into a library, books are neatly arranged on shelves according to subject matter. You take a book or a magazine off the shelf and you can read the book jacket and it tells you something about the author, it tells you who the publisher is. Uh, you can get a sense of whether you want to read that and, and the credentials of what you're going to be reading. Mm -hmm. Now imagine you walked into a library and instead there were 2 billion pieces of paper just flying around in the air. You grab one out of the air, you start to read it, you don't know who's financing it. You don't know what their credentials are. You have no idea what their agenda is. And worst of all, there's no librarian there to tell you something about all that, the way there is in a library. That's the internet. That's your Facebook feed. That's your Twitter feed. That's your Google search. That's your Bing search. That's everything on the internet. Everything. But, Steven, but see, sometimes in some ways people might be thinking, and this is where I think there's an analogy, it's in the library. So even though there's billions of pieces of paper around, if it's in the library, it must be okay. So if it's- Well, a library is a library. With internet, it's okay. People who care about content. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Facebook is not a library and the people running Facebook are not librarians. Right. They don't much care apparently about um, the reliability of what they're mm -hmm. serving up to you. And in fact, they don't even, you know, their claim is they don't even serve it up to you. It's it's everybody else. It's a platform. So anybody mm -hmm. you know, can be a publisher. Now, the good thing about the internet is that anybody can be a publisher, which makes it you know, much more democratic. The bad thing about the internet is that anybody can be a publisher. Now, when you take all those issues of unreliability and trustworthiness and understanding who's feeding you the news and combine that with the subject of healthcare, all those dangers multiply. Because first of all, you know, good information about healthcare is really important. Mm -hmm. It's much more important that you get good information about uh, the quality of a treatment than it is, let's say, that, uh, than that uh, you get good information about whether you should go watch a movie or not, right? It's really important. It's fraught with all kinds of um, emotional issues. If you're sick, you're scared. Um, and you know, let's say a doctor tells you you have some kind of a disease. The first thing you do is you Google the disease. That's what everybody does. Now, luckily, if you Google and WebMD comes up, which has a big green rating from NewsGuard, because according to our nine criteria, uh, you know, WebMD is reliable. It is something you can you know you can count on. But uh, the next site that might pop up in a Google search might be something called cancer.news. Hmm. And cancer.news looks exactly like cancer.org. Cancer.org is the site of the American Cancer Society. Cancer Society. Cancer.news is a hoax healthcare site that will tell you that if you can get some apricot pits, you can cancel your appointment with your oncologist because the apricot pits are going to cure your cancer. And trust me, they have more a more engagement online than the Mayo Clinic or cancer.org. So what we've decided to do at NewsGuard is we've, uh, we've created a whole um, a subset of product called healthguard.com, which is targeted at all the health sites out there, anything online that um, in any way covers healthcare, provides advice about healthcare, whether it's about the COVID vaccine, or cancer, or good diets. Yeah. And uh, the way we do it 
is we have a browser extension uh, that beginning um, in January, people can download for free at the end of January. They can download HealthGuard for free. And if they have that browser extension, when they go to Facebook or Google or Twitter, um, they will be able to see our little uh, green or red icons. Mm -hmm. and when you hover over one of our green icons, it will tell you um, why this is green according to our nine criteria, their basic journalistic criteria. Or if you hover over it and it's red, it will tell you why it's red, why it's unreliable. And we run through all the criteria. If you want to go over, I want to go over these criteria. Let, let's start off sure. with you break it down the scoring first in terms of credibility. So let's go over when we want to assess credibility. What do we look for? And you start off with does not repeatedly publish false content. But, but that can be a challenge because how do, how do you know? But you're, you're rating these as in, in terms so, of. Well, the first thing we know is when it comes to healthcare, we don't know. So we consult experts. We will cite uh, sources, whether it's the, the American Cancer Society, the CDC, the FDA, the Mayo Clinic. So we will uh, read a website. And let's say the website says, literally says, I'm not making this up, that apricot pits cure cancer. You know, you can search and you will find that that, that myth is out there enough that uh, the American Cancer Society or, uh, you know, Sloan Kettering or MD Anderson may have actually posted something on their website to knock that myth down. And that's what we will cite. It's not my opinion about whether free prints. Got it. Cancer. That's what I assume based on expert. It's an expert. Sure. So, Everything we do is done by humans. There are no algorithms here. We have hired you know, dozens of journalists to read all these sites and to do the research. And it's done according to nine criteria. Now, the first one, as you mentioned, was uh, repeatedly publishing false news. There were other criteria such as disclosure, uh, uh, disclosure of uh, the ownership of the site. Let's say you come to a site because you're worried about uh, you know, whether uh, you can get, uh, you know, melanoma or not. And if the site that pops up recommends a certain, you know, drug or a certain, uh, you know, screening uh, material, you'd probably want to know if that site is owned by whoever happens to be selling that product, as opposed to whether the site is WebMD, which doesn't, you know, own any drug products. So the criteria are, I mean, we'll put them on the screen for people to see as well. It does not repeatedly publish false content. It gathers and presents information responsibly. It regularly corrects or clarifies errors, handles the difference between news and opinion responsibly, avoids deceptive headlines. That's just on the credibility side. Stephen, it, it would seem like you need to hire an army just on well, credibility. Key, and we well, haven't even gotten to transparency. We have, we have been able to rate in the countries where we operate, including obviously the United States, all the news and information sites responsible for 95% of all engagement online. The key to this is we rate the overall reliability of the site, its, its standards, its processes and its standards. That doesn't mean that the New York Times or WebMD or, uh, or, or uh, the Mayo Clinic site might not make a mistake. It just means that they'll correct their mistakes. It means that overall, you can rely on them more than you can rely on cancer.news. You know, that's a key ingredient, you know, the overall processes and integrity of the publisher. And that's how we achieve scale. And, um, you know, by the way, we do this in um, a journalistic way. If we're going to criticize any site and give any site even you know one red mark for just one of the nine criteria, they're still going to get an overall green, but we call for comment. Journalists call for comment. Algorithms don't call for comment. So everything about our process is totally transparent and it's completely um, accountable. If someone complains about a mistake we've made, we investigate it. If we've made a mistake, we correct it. On the transparency side, and you've discussed some of this, the website discloses ownership and financing. It clearly labels advertising. It reveals who's in charge. 
including possible conflicts of interest. And the site provides names of content creators along with either content or biographical information. Are those things also that consumers should look for as well? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, every one of our nine criteria, you know, it's basically uh, the nine criteria have to do with what's on the website. So it's in essence a roadmap for a consumer, even if they're not using our browser extension, which I hope they will, they can look for those nine criteria themselves. You know, for example, if you're reading something on a healthcare site that's giving you healthcare advice, you should want to know who's giving you the advice. Is this person a cancer expert? Or is this person I'm an intern? And I mean a journalism intern, not even a you know, medical intern. Why do you think people are so easily misled when it comes to their health? And people know when they read you know, stock tips online or they read information about finances, you need to double check everything, you need to do your own research, you need to look around. You know, nobody goes online and then tries to fix their own brakes in their car, but when it comes to health, somebody has a website or a blog, all of a sudden we're like, oh, I should try that when, it, when it's your body. So where is the disconnect there? Well, there are a couple of, first of all, I'll agree, um, I'll disagree with you a little bit. There are a whole bunch of, you know, fraudulent, uh, you know, personal finance sites. Well, we do know that. I just, <laughs> we all get the requests of, you know, uh, give me your, uh, routing number because I've got to give you $10 million. But, but your but, point is well yeah. taken. I mean, you know, you would never think to fix your brakes by yourself or, or to, yeah. you know, to, you know, change the plumbing in your house by yourself. But, you know, let's look at what happens, you know, when you're in a healthcare situation. One of the temptations is that you want to find an easier, better alternative than the doctor has suggested. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just to give you um, a personal example, um, four years ago, I uh, was told during a routine checkup that I had an aortic aneurysm, mm. which is really bad stuff, right? Yeah. You have no symptoms. Um, if it bursts, you just die. Mm -hmm. But you have no symptoms. And I was working out every day. I was healthy. And my doctor said, you know, you need to have open heart surgery. So I took it very seriously. He's a great doctor. But I still went home that night and started Googling around and said, well, maybe there's an easier way to deal with this. And, you know, luckily I didn't you know, succumb to, you know, there were some articles that said, if your doctor says you, you know, you have an aortic aneurysm and you need open heart surgery, here's something else you can do. But a lot of people are scared. They're not informed and they just, you know, they're clutching at straws. In the case of vaccines and the COVID vaccine, there's a, you know, there's traditionally a lot of skepticism about vaccines. That has really ramped up in the last few years, you know, based on campaigns about, you know, the measles vaccine, the MMR vaccine. And now you have, you know, the COVID vaccine, which by everybody's, you know, everybody's understanding has been, quote, rushed, unquote. But there may be less understanding that of the nature of what rushed in this case really means. It's still gone through the clinical trials it needs to go through, et cetera, et cetera. So there's, there's that sort of anti-vax you know, fear in the air. Then there's all the politics associated with COVID where a certain percentage of the population has been persuaded that not even COVID is real. So if that's not real, why should you take a vaccine for it? So, the, it, you know, but we are finding um, that, you know, a third or more of people in this country and around the world are saying they won't take the vaccine. And the place where it's really been driven home is uh, the reports you and I have been reading lately that even non-MD healthcare workers are hesitant about the vaccine, like a third of them. Um, mm -hmm. My wife got her first vaccine yesterday morning. Okay. And... Uh, the nurse who was giving her the vaccine, you know, they were chatting and my wife said, well, you must have had the vaccine. How was it? And he said, no, I haven't taken the vaccine. And she said, you know, why not? Well, I don't know. You know, I want to see what happens. I want to wait. That's a nurse in a highly regarded hospital giving the vaccine. Mm -hmm. You came into that, you know, vaccine room 
you know, as my wife did. And if you were at all hesitant about the vaccine, and the first thing the nurse is about to give it to you tells you is, well, I don't want to take it. Just think about that. What made you decide to create, co-create NewsGuard? Was there a particular event? Was it just a point in time when you're like, enough is enough? It's a combination of things. And all the businesses I've started, you know, have been, uh, you know, journalistically oriented, um, except for one. Mm -hmm. And it, it was really, in this case, geared toward how do you restore belief in uh, legitimate journalism and everything that, that goes with that, everything that's so important to our democracy, in this case, so important to our healthcare, that, that goes along with belief in legitimate journalism. And the only way to do that is to weed out the other stuff. And that has to, you know, that also helps with advertising. If advertisers are scared that nobody believes anything, then they stop advertising on news, which many have. And if instead they have a way to advertise on news that is overall reliable, it doesn't mean you agree with everything on the website. It means that it's overall, these are people who wake up in the morning and they're trying to do something good. Um, so it was meant really to restore faith in the profession that's been my life. And how is NewsGuard supported? Well, we have uh, different kinds of licensees. There's a way a consumer can subscribe to either the HealthGuard browser extension or the NewsGuard browser extension. Um, but during this emergency, we are making the HealthGuard browser extension um, available for free to everyone in the countries we serve until the end of June. Our real business model is that companies that serve consumers, for example, broadband providers or Microsoft through its Edge browser, licenses NewsGuard and gives it to all of its customers. And on the advertising side, advertising agencies uh, license a NewsGuard related product called BrandGuard and use it to make sure their, their clients, their brands are not advertising on sites that will embarrass them and are advertising on uh, legitimate news. So if you take the view that I do, that there's a market for uh, you know, people looking for ways to provide a trust tool for the internet, um, then this looks like a pretty good business model and so far it is. Well, Stephen, I wanna thank you for taking the time today for all that you're doing to help combat misinformation that, that really is rampant right now, particularly as it relates to health. Well, thanks for having me.